This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and this is the HTC Evo View 4G. This is Sprint's version of the HTC Flyer and it adds a 4G WiMAX radio and 3G EVDO Rev A to the standard flyer design and it also has some more internal storage. So what's different? What do you get for this $399 with two-year contract tablet versus the $499 Wi-Fi only version? First you can see the package that it comes in, your typical Sprint pleasant packaging. Open it up. Tablets inside. A nice little plastic baggie to keep it safe. And if you take a look at the back, you can see it's all gray. We'll take it out of the paper so you can get a better look at that. The front looks pretty much the same except for the surround is not white. It is dark gray. And on the back, there you see. I think this one's actually nicer looking than the regular flyer. It looks a little bit less appliance white. It's nice dark gray metal all around. And you've got these two little cute red slots here where the speakers are. And just like with the other flyer, the, the end pops off so you can access the micro SD card slot, but you cannot access the battery. What else do you get in the box? Take that out. And you can see you get your getting started guide here. The charger and the USB cable. No headphones and sorry, no MHL adapters so you can use the micro USB out to an HD TV over HDMI. Hopefully those will start appearing in stores. And with the Sprint deal, you also get the pen, HTC's Scribe pen, and here it is, along with the quadruple A battery, very small battery that goes inside. And this one allows you to take notes, do screenshots, and work with Evernote. And Sprint says that you get this pen for free with the flyer for a limited time. We don't really know what that means because they haven't been more specific about that. If sold separately, it's $80. Now we're not going to do a super detailed review of this because this is just about identical to the HTC Flyer that we did a review of very recently with the addition of 3G and 4G. This one also has 32 gigs of storage, nominally. About 20 gigs of those are available for your use. Uh, HTC's protected bootloader takes up a lot of space apparently in that storage. And it does have the micro SD card slot under one of the back caps as well, so you can expand that and carry plenty of stuff with you on the go. It's a very nice, sharp, colorful, bright display, as you can see here. We're pretty pleased with that, just like with the original flyer. And the design is very pleasing. It's got an interesting kind of curve to it here, where it comes back in. And that's with the raised edges here, it protects it. If you drop it face down or put it face down, it, it's going to touch the frame before it ever touches the Gorilla Glass. This is 7-inch Gorilla Glass, 1024 by 600 pixels. And it is capacitive multi-touch. You have your rear main 5 megapixel camera on the back, no flash. There's your headphone jack right there, power button. Volume controls are here. Micro USB cable port right here. Nothing to see on that side. On the front here you have the usual capacitive touch buttons. You have a home, menu, back, and we have the special little button that works with the pen. And the first time you tap on it, it's going to show you a tutorial about how you can draw and use it. And if you flip it over to the eraser, and you can use it as a capacitive stylus, which is pretty cool. Because otherwise, you can see this doesn't do anything except for take screenshots of this end. Like the HTC Flyer, this is running Android OS 2.3 Gingerbread. That's basically a phone OS running on a tablet computer. We don't have Honeycomb. HTC is said for the Flyer at any rate. That honeycomb will be coming sometime in the future. We don't know about the Evo View 4G version of that. But one of the reasons that HTC went with 2.3 instead of honeycomb is because they can customize it a lot more heavily. There's not much of a customization option right now in honeycomb. Google seems to be guarding that OS closely and the user experience there. So you can see we've got the custom overlay here that's a lot like what you've seen on HTC Sense phones. You can get the settings real quick there, for example. And this takes you to all your programs. And there's a shortcut to the ebook reader, which is powered by Kobo Books, and to Notes, which is actually Evernote, and we'll take a look at that in a minute, and HTC Watch, which is their vid video and TV show rental and download service. Not a lot of titles yet there, but we're sure more will come. In terms of Sprint software, on here we have Sprint Hotspot feature, so you can use this as a 4G hotspot. 
And we've got Sprint Radio, Sprint Zone, Sprint Mobile Wallet on board as well. And Telenav GPS Navigator, which is always handy for spoken turn-by-turn -turn directions if you're not copacetic with Google's turn-by-turn -turn directions, which is also on here. And as you can see, this is running HTC Sense software. You recognize their giant flip clock with the weather embedded. The weather now makes sound effects. Technically, this is HTC Sense 2.1 for tablets, but it's the equivalent of HTC Sense 3 for phones, basically. They're just using different version numbers. So you can see if you do that quick swirl, you get the carousel and 3D effect kind of thing. A hallmark of Sense 3.0. You can use the Album Viewer widget. You've got social networking widgets here. You've got a music player widget. Calendar widget. I like the calendar widget a lot. And HEC Friendstream, which is their social networking. News widget. A lot of good stuff. And then quick links to turn your wireless radios on and off which you can also access by dragging down here. You've got your notifications and then you've got your quick settings where you can control all your wireless radios as well. 4G, you can turn it on and off independently. Of course, you've got 3G, the Wi-Fi hotspot feature, and Wi-Fi you can turn on and off. And it has Bluetooth 3.0 as well. This does not have a cellular radio for voice calls. This is a data-only tablet. 4G speeds have been quite good for us. WiMAX has definitely improved here. You can see this is not a tablet-aware application, so it's inset quite small. But the top numbers here, we have 5.8 megs down, 8.4 megs down, 6 megs down. We're done outside with reasonably good WiMAX coverage, 4G coverage here. The 3.1 meg download was done indoors, and the 322K was with 3G EVDO Rev A instead. So certainly there's an exponential burst in download speeds, and even upload speeds are way better too when you're using WiMAX. So it might not be as fast as LTE, but hey, it, it's pretty fast and it's, a, it, it's beating uh, T-Mobile's 4G HSPA Plus network at the moment, or certainly is neck and neck with it, I should say. At least if you're outdoors. The problem with WiMAX is it's very high spectrum, so indoor building penetration is not very good. Now I'll compare it with Sprint's first 7-inch tablet from uh, the fall of last year, and that's the 7-inch Samsung Galaxy Tab, also running Android 2.0. 2, actually, not 2.3 gingerbread, but close enough, it's a phone OS as well version. And you can see the Evo view is about the same size, maybe a hair bigger. And side by side, thickness is similar. The, the Evo view definitely has a bit more of a classy metal look with complex curved sides and, and all that kind of thing, and it's, it's a nice step up from the 7-inch Galaxy Tab. Screen quality on both of these is, is really quite good. I think the Evo view may be a little bit sharper, but Samsung gives you a lot of adjustments too for color saturation and white and black density and stuff too, which is pretty sophisticated. And then in the back view you can see here the Galaxy Tab is gloss white plastic versus the metal unibody look of the HTC. You've got a front-facing camera over here for video chat, and uh, it might be seeming a little odd to be over there, but that's because they figure you're going to be using that in landscape orientation, where it makes a whole lot more sense. Video quality, it's, it's okay. We wish this had 2.3.4, a release of Gingerbread that supported uh, video chat and Google Talk, but hopefully that will come sometime in the future. And obviously we have an accelerometer here, so it works in both portrait and landscape orientations. There's a 4,000 milliamp battery, and the, uh, the flyer with Wi-Fi, boy, that could go a couple of days on the charge. We found WiMAX is pretty punishing on battery life, but still with 4,000 milliamps, this guy can make it through the day, which is certainly an improvement over some WiMAX phones like the Evo View 3D, which have obviously much smaller batteries because they're smaller devices, and they have trouble making it through the day. So this is definitely a viable alternative. You're not going to be so tied to your charger if you want 4G speeds in a potentially pocketable or easily thrown in your bag Android device. In all the respects, this is the same as the HTC Flyer with Wi-Fi, and I encourage you to read that review and to watch our video review of the Flyer to get even further detail on it, but we'll take a look at a couple more things. First we're going to take a look at HTC's watch. And while we're in watch, I just want to point out one thing. You can see the capacitive backlit buttons are down here at the bottom, and if you switch it this way, always keeping the camera up top, automatically they appear down here, which is a very nice little touch. So we're just going to pick a, one of the trailers that's on here. And we switched over to Wi-Fi because our WiMAX coverage is not that good indoors. And you can hear the speakers pretty loud. I'm 
meteor shower. We now know that meteors will land off the coast of different cities. A small cluster of meteors is... So that's pretty good looking. This can play 720p video. It cannot play 1080p video. And again, if you get find an optional MHL adapter that plugs into the micro USB port, that will split out to an HDMI port and a charging port, so you can charge the device and output to an HD TV. The reader on here is powered by Kobo Books, as I mentioned, it's the same on the as on the flyer. It's a pleasant experience, so we'll just take a look at one of the included books. And it automatically dims the screen there because a bright white screen is really hard in your eyes. You can adjust the screen brightness if you want. So that looks cute. Looks like a book. Landscape, nope. Go into settings, you can do things like bookmark, make annotations, so on. And adjust the brightness of the screen. Now we've made it bright, so you can see it better, and this actually works with the pen. You touch over there, you have options, we're just going to pick a pencil, and we are going to make notes on our book, and it automatically bookmarks at the same time, which is pretty cool. So we're going to use a highlighter instead, to make more sense. If you press more lightly, you can see here I was pressing pretty hard and the words have actually disappeared. If you press more lightly, you, you can do just more useful sort of opaque highlighting so you can still read the words. So it's pressure sensitive, which is also fun when you're drawing and painting. Uh, here we just prefer to see an opaque, non opaque highlighter, but hey, what can you do? And while we're looking at inking, we'll take a look at the other note, the other application that supports it, and primarily the reason that this has the pen is the notes application, which is actually Evernote. So I've signed into my Evernote account here and I have all of my notes over here, anything that's uh, text-based shows up just fine. This is a screenshot I actually take, took from the flyer, shows up here. Handmade notes, and I am going to make a new note. And here I can type in if I want to in a traditional way, or I use a Bluetooth keyboard to actually put in notes. You can record vi voice, you can uh, put an attachment, you can take a picture with the camera and embed it as well, and you can ink onto the calendar. And of course you can also draw if you use the pen. And we're going to switch to a magic marker, and there it is. So here it is pressure sensitive, so you can see how here is a light line, and this is with a heavy line. Not too much of a difference when you're using this tool. We'll switch to the paintbrush. Very light line and heavy line. So those of you graphic artist types will probably enjoy doing a little bit of basic drawing with this using pressure sensitivity. In terms of performance, this has the same specs as the flyer. It's got a 1.5 GHz single core Snapdragon CPU. It's not usually high clock speed, but it is also single core. Performance is pretty good, as you can see. There might be occasional little bit of lag here and there, but nothing to speak of. It's got a gig of RAM. And it has Wi-Fi 802.11bgn in addition to Bluetooth 3.0 and the GPS. It's got full access to the Android market and all the applications that are available there as well. And it will be available June 24th for $3.99 with a contract from Sprint. So a couple of additions over the basic flyer. You get more storage on this. Obviously you get the 3G and 4G radios. And you get a different color back. And this has a GPS, as we mentioned, and it's got both Google Maps and Telenav. We have no problems at all with the GPS. It works quite well. And obviously the 3G and 4G are going to be very handy when using this on the road. If you've got Wi-Fi, well, you're not going to be downloading maps and directions on the go, are you, in your car. So here you can see scrolling speed is just fine. It found our location. And if we tap and hold, see if there's an available address there. And there you go, big and beautiful view of any address that you're looking at. That panoramic view, and the speed is very good too there. That is really nice. Way, way more exciting than it is on phones. And of course this has the navigation feature for Google too, so it does do spoken turn-by-turn -turn directions. And there's also Telenav on here if you prefer Telenav. 
Sprint includes Quick for video chat, and it's pretty much become the standard for Android phones with front-facing cameras. It works okay. And of course, you've got the usual very good Android WebKit-based web browser with Adobe Flash support. We have the latest Adobe Flash 10.3 loaded on here. And we default to Sprint's website, and we will visit our own website, and you can see the on-screen keyboard in the process. It's a large version of the usual HTC keyboard right here. And that loaded very quickly, since we've got Wi-Fi on at the moment. And we'll check out Flash Playback by looking at our Evo 3D video review. Now you're not going to get the hardware acceleration here that you would with a Tegra 2 dual-core CPU, but it's fast enough CPU that we're hoping it should load and play fine. It's decent on the flyer, so... And there we have it. I'll play it at 360p here, embedded in the web page first. This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this, this is, is the HTC Evo. And we'll pop it out to full screen. Big combination of 4G. Where it's not doing a 480p. Well, let's call that acceptable, definitely. Not quite as good as a BlackBerry Playbook, but what can you do? So that's the HTC Evo View 4G. It's for Sprint, and it's available for $399 with contract on June 24th. It is the Sprint version of the HTC Flyer 7-inch Android tablet. And certainly, if you have a need for the wide area wireless and in terms of uh, 4G and 3G, then this is quite useful, especially, obviously, for doing things like using the GPS. The good thing about this using the Phone OS is that there's a lot more tab non-tablet apps actually available than there are tablet apps for Android, so you're going to find plenty of apps to keep you busy here just from the regular selection of Android apps, and most of them do run full screen these days. So it's a reasonably good experience. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the HTC Evo View 4G for Sprint.